I'm going to show you almost every way to process a kick drum, the literal heartbeat of contemporary music. And I've written down 28 techniques. And to keep it simple, almost all of these techniques fall into one of three categories. Equalization, dynamics, or harmonic. All right, so a quick little edit here. This became just one massive experiment. Then I ended up trashing a bunch of them because I was like, this is stupid. And then there were some really good ones. So the good techniques made it to this video. The trash ones where I'm like, why did I even think about them? You can see which trash techniques we hear on the screen. Um, I just sort of threw in the bin and I said, well, why am I going to waste people's time with it? So what I'm showing you here are techniques which turned out pretty good um, for the sake of the exercise. So let's get back to the video. Now, let me show you the kick we're using from the song Baby Blue by Rue. First one we're going to start off with is the pull tech push pull, where we boost and attenuate at the same frequency, but because these two shelves have different filter curves, we get a little notch in the low mid slash upper lows and a boost around the lows that's quite unique sounding to this unit. So let's have a listen as we pull this in. That's really nice on the, like, if you want a big fat sub, that's pretty cool. Let's take a listen to it in context with the mix. If this needed a big fat round kick, this would make sense. Because it's, there's a lot of, there's a bit of sustain in those subs already. This is exacerbating that, so it's not keeping up with the rhythm or the pace of the mix. Next, notching the fundamental and the second order harmonic. To save me searching around and sweeping the EQ, I've just got this up in audio editor. On the initial transient, the fundamental is around the same frequency as the harmonic, but then it actually swoops down in frequency where the sustained harmonic is about an octave lower. And that is at about the frequency... 40 hertz is where the sustain is, and that means around 80 hertz, is this it? Yep. Oh, it's a bit high. It's about the third order there. 130 hertz is where the main sort of transient energy is um, at the very start. So let's boost 130 hertz. That gives it a really nice attack. Um, I actually like that quite a bit. It's it's very interesting. Once you go into audio editor, you can start seeing things like where the fundamental is, where the next order harmonics are, whether the fundamental sustains or is louder at the start or in the sustain portion of the of the actual kick drum. Very useful tool. And what started out as a notch, it just started ringing a little bit too much because it rings into the tail there afterwards. I just made it wider and it's actually giving the kick a nice punch. Take a listen again. It's pretty cool. Let's have a listen to that in the mix. I actually really like that. And I think if I had a client who really didn't want me to get too creative with the kick drum tone and change it too far from the original, uh, this is one way to do that without getting too intrusive. The next EQ technique is to notch the flab or the resonance. Now there's all this sustain in the kick drum below 60 hertz, which isn't in the initial transient. And this is a very percussive song, very snappy and rhythmic and driving. What is that flab doing? Is it working for the track or not against it? And in my opinion, it's actually working against it. So if we create a B EQ here, let's actually aim to attenuate this. Now we can either use a notch or we can use a high shelf, but I'm going to try using notch here. So around 50 shirts, I'd say that's probably 50 something hertz. Let's have a listen.
that is way cleaner. You don't have that big vuh straight after the kick. It's just nice and tight. I actually really, really like that um, in terms of tightening it up. I'm curious to see how that sounds if I paired it with this 130 hertz boost. So let's do a 130 hertz boost. 130. For 3 dB. Let's have a listen to this kick drum sound now. So we've got the boost at, the, at, at, at that transient fundamental and then the duck of the flab. Let's have a listen. That is really tight. That is really tight. The next EQ technique is using a high pass filter. This one's a classic. And the reason why I like this, um, sometimes it works for getting rid of flab, sometimes it doesn't. The times it doesn't is when it kills the overall tone or energy or vibe of the sound. Now, if the producer came back to me and he says, I really like the sustain in that sub, manage it. Instead of notching, I'm going to opt for a high pass filter. And I'll show you how I'll do that. So we're, our notch was at about 52 hertz, I think, 55 hertz, yeah, thereabouts. What I would do is I'd use a softer slope, so let's say a 12 decibel per octave slope, but instead of setting it at 52 hertz, I'd set it maybe at 26 hertz. So it's already starting to attenuate there a little bit. Actually, I might use a 6 dB, just slightly starts to shave off a little bit there. Okay, now take a listen to this on and off. It still has that that sustain, but it's not as like out of like just which is what it's like before. Now it's just a little bit cleaner, which is nice. The next one is adding some knock to the kick drum. Typically, I like to do this on an SSL channel strip, boost that three four K region. Um, and you know what? For the sake of this exercise, let's actually use the SSL here um, because I do like doing that with the SSL, where you just get that. That top end, you just crank it just a little bit to get that knock out of the kick drum, that out of it. I don't like the waves on. I'm much more a bigger fan of the BX console one. I like it. The reason why is, I don't know, I've just used it more, so I'm more familiar with it. That's just how I roll. And also the knobs are all bigger. I think you can change the screen size of the other one, but I just like this one. So let's get that sort of 3K, get it cranking. bit edgy, a little bit edgy. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take this down. Oh, there's all that grit up the top. Oh. So if you want to add that knock, it's okay to do it on its own, but if you really want to make it work it needs a clean slate so we've got this little boost at that fundamental on the initial transient and the harmonic in the sustain and this notch on the sustain that that sub wobble and take a listen to this before and after oh and in addition to that we've got that boost at four and a half k The next one is a weird one, and I don't know how it's going to work with this. I wrote down putting a sub boost at 20 to 40 hertz. Hmm. I do like doing this, but for this kick drum, I don't think it's going to work, but we're going to do it anyway. Let's get down to 20 hertz. Give it a little bit of crank down there. I don't think it's going to work for the sake of this particular kick drum. You know what? I take that back. Sometimes I eat my words. And at two decibels at 30 hertz shelf gives just a little bit more weight, which is actually really nice and welcome, especially after taking all that sub out of the sustain. There you go. Now we're going to get onto the dynamic section of managing this kick drum. 
Pro MB. Now, this is something I've done in the past. This is something I think I've even seen Luca Predolesi do. I could be stand to be corrected on this. Um, but basically, it's using Pro MB to manage the sub-tightness of the kick drum, or sometimes you can even do this in the master. Um, so basically, what we're going to do is we're going to gel this sub-sustain so it doesn't poke out. So we're going to compress all this sub-energy and then bring it back up slightly. So let's do that. Look, to be honest, I don't think dynamic EQ is necessary when you've got the kick super isolated like this. This is something I'd be doing more across a drum bus or um, a loop where I can't remove the kick drum and isolate it. But we're going to go on to this next one. And this one I'm just going to explore with you guys. Transient Shaper. I have no clue what I got Transient Shaper wise. You know which one I use? Knock. 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 Punch. Transient. Transient Shaper. Look at this. Let's let's have a listen to how this makes this kick drum shine, or it might not at all, and then I'll have to hit up decap and be like, dude, you failed me in this video. What's going on? I like this. I like this a lot. And the reason is, is because it's simple, but there's something I don't like as well. It's the fact that in this plugin, obviously you can use another insert. I can't control that sub sustain, which is just sort of like after it. This is just really good at getting the transient out. And it does what it says. And we dial it up. There's a little bit more transient and we're good. So I rate this. I have been using knock a lot. I just never see it as a, never consider it as a transient shape. I, I call it a knock shaper. Well, I think of it as a knock shaper because it's got so many different um, parts to it. It's got the transient shaper, obviously transient shaper. I just look at it as a punch. Like, that's punch. I, I don't think transient shaper. I don't know why. But also the saturation. And then if I have to blend in a bit of artificial sort of sub signal into it. I never thought of that. And I didn't plan that to say any of that in this video. But um, there you go. Transient shapers for your kick drum. Use knock. It's good. Didn't get paid to say that. I just forgot that I do use this a shit ton in mixes um, and it is a transient shaper and I had transient shaper on this list and I thought I'd just wing it in the video and I'll stop waffling. Let's get back to the video. Oh, this one is good. The 76 FET based compression or it's analog modeled FET based compression, but it's super, super fast. So if you make the release super fast, the attack slow for a FET compressor, but still fast as hell and you crush the shit out of it in blue version. Take a listen. I know what you're thinking, that is extreme, but you blend a little bit of this in parallel. All right, I'll show you. I'm going to take this down here. You blend a bit of this extreme freaking compression in parallel and um, take a listen to how this kick drum takes shape.
adds a really nice attack because it is a super bitey fast compressor even though i got the attack all the way slow it's still fast for most compression styles so there you go the 1176 that's how i use it all blue mode slamming the shit out of it works a treat this is in parallel obviously but this this is just this is just a comment i got when i posed this to um instagram is how to make how do you mix your kick drums and you know what a lot of people said a lot well by a lot i mean three people they said we make the kick drum louder when they want the kick drum to be punchy they make it louder and i think that's actually a really good technique so what we're going to do is we're going to put a trim plug in here we're just going to have a listen to the mix because sometimes that's all you need you want a bigger kick drum instead of trying to fuck with it so much why not just add 3 db again and then see where that takes you Make it now, it's all my fault I did I end up as a boyfriend I only see you when the clothes come off Try to make it now, it's all It works when the kick drum is cleaned up and ready to be driven louder So yes, you can make it louder if it doesn't have that resonance in the tail and, the, and it's neat and punchy But when it's not, you can't So, you get what I'm saying there? Now we're getting into harmonic processes, and I'm going to use Tape here by Baby Audio. Tape saturation, and this is pretty cool because it gels, it's, it's like compression, EQ, and harmonic saturation all in one because it's softly compressing things, it's changing the tone, and it's introducing some harmonic character. So let's, let's, let's see how this sounds. I like this. So we've got a bit more glue compressing it. A smiley face EQ. And then we've driven it just a little bit. Have a listen to how the drive changes. It makes it a little bit grittier as we drive it harder. Tape saturation, beautiful, subtle, does a million things all at once. I like it. Next, soft clipping, good. All right, now, I'll show you when I'd be using a clipper, all right? Let's say the transients are poking out the mix too far and we want to control it so it doesn't smash all of our bus compressors. Simple, clip it. Here, I'll show you. Basically, I'm clipping whenever I want the transit information to be controlled before another processor. Can't showcase that on this because this kick drum is really heavily compressed coming in already. So we're going to work with what we got. Oh, this is a good one. Now this, this is a harmonic one. Yes, it's a color one. Andrew Shep's Lo-Fi. I actually have Lo-Fi plug in as default on my kick and snare channels in my template. And the reason being is because distortion at just like 0 0.3 0 0.4 is 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 a magic touch now andrew sheps goes over this in one of his pure mix tutorials when he's mixing drums and it's to do with the even order harmonics i think by order um but just take a listen to it as it's just on 0 0.4 and listen to this before and after it's it's really nice what it does to the kick It just attacks more. Yes, it's a little bit louder, but that loudness is coming from the harmonics it's introducing, not necessarily the overall volume coming up, even, even though the RMS does get increased when you have more harmonics, but you have to follow me there. More harmonics, not necessarily more fundamental volume or EQ boost, just newly introduced even order harmonics. So if you've made it this far through, you're probably wondering, how did I turn this kick drum here? Come on, come on, come on into sounding like this. Let me show you. So I used a bunch of these techniques I've just went through with you. The first one is in Ozone 11 with the EQ module. Now here we've got transient information, which I did nothing with, but the sustain I did a lot. 
I did a brick wall high shelf on the subs and then that notch around that 50 hertz range only on the sustain. So that was the first part. So let's take a listen to each of these processes as I turn them on and off. Low end focus was good. It added a little bit of that punch, which I needed, which is similar sort of EQ shape to the pull tech um, push pull technique. Then I've added some harmonics to the subs here. It's a little bit aggressive, but it works. And this is where all the tightness comes from. And this is super high compression ratio. So think of the 1176 in all mode. So uh, infinite ratio. So it's practically limiting with a slow attack and a super fast release. And then I'm gating again, super fast release, super fast attack, high threshold. So I'm just catching the tips of everything. And then I'm just adding a little bit more sub in and yeah, take a listen. So there you have it. All these different ways you can process a kick drum and all the different aspects of a kick drum and how to process it, whether it's EQ or dynamic. This wasn't the best sample of a kick drum to choose for this video in hindsight. So I'll keep in mind of that for next time I make a video like this to think about sample selection. Um, but I picked this track because it was just something atypical, or not atypical, something typical of coming into the studio needing mixing. And I thought, well, rather than try and find a Hail Mary of an example, I'll find something that I've just worked on and is out and work with that for the video. So anyway, until next time, take care.